Hey y'all, Dave Boscos. Just wanted to give you a little bit of an attic renovation update. Not much of one because we really haven't gotten that far. Um, just did a couple more tweaks in the bathroom, which I'll show you. The sink is installed. The drain for the sink is installed. Have no hot water. The hot water is plumbed, but we can't install or we can't turn on the hot water yet because without a shower valve, the hot and the cold water just cycle all through the house together and get mixed up. So, um, also want to talk about moving forward and renovating the other side of the attic, which I hope to film just about every square inch of so you can see from start to finish how these renovations work and how to do it, at least how, how I did it. Might not be the right way, but you know, I think it'll be adequate. And, um, but before we can proceed, there are some exterior issues on the house that we need to take care of that could uh, potentially harm the new attic renovation. So I'm going to show you that right now before we get to the update on what we've done already. So let me explain a little bit. The attic renovation we've already done was on this side of the house over here. From the end to uh, the French doors up there are probably right about there, just past the front door itself. So this side has yet to be renovated. And if you can see, we'll go under this way. The carport and all that is cantilevered. And all this porch. So the knee wall actually runs right here above this brick exterior wall. And all this would be behind the knee wall. Um, but on this side of the house, knee wall is there. And that is behind the knee wall. So that actually has house beneath it there. But this is a lot of structure and a lot of weight over here and you can see from below this is where we get all our materials up we've got this steel door with a dead bolt on it and we just use this ladder to get everything up in there that's how we got all our insulation and drywall and lumber and everything up there we just stack it in the carport where it's dry well, it's not dry now. This isn't because it rained under here. This is just because it's been so misty and humid that water's condensed on the floor. But um, anyways, if you keep it off the floor and keep it covered, it stays pretty dry under here. And then as we need them, we move the materials up there. We did stack a bunch of materials up inside there on that side of the attic. But, so, the bulk of this side of the attic renovation turning it into part of the attic suite, which will be more like the living room area up there. If we want to Airbnb this, you can see this is a massive bit of roof here. That's a pitch they call unwalkable. I don't remember the pitch exactly, but it's... No. Anyways, very difficult to walk on. And I'm digressing a little bit here. So this whole cantilevered part of the attic soon to be living space is held up by these little wrought iron posts and I went and looked up the load capacity on these posts and I think the corner post at the most is like 1200 pounds at the most it might be less than that and the little two two uh square i don't know what they call that square tubing the ones that have two i think that's about one inch support about 600 pounds so <laughs> that means basically that all these posts together Oh, starting to rain really good. Can support 1,200, 1,200, you know, maybe, I don't know, five, six thousand 6,000 pounds. And that is not adequate for 
all the weight that's going to be up here, especially after we double joist and move furniture and stuff up there. And that is not the only problem. One of the problems is, and this has just started happening recently in the past couple of years, um, this edge of the carport where this most important, this is the most important column in the whole carport that supports all that upstairs is sinking. It's, it's not even that it's just sinking. The footing is sinking and right now the column itself is kind of hovering on nothing which I'll show you in a second. But this is, I want to show you how this is the most important because this one right here supports that whole corner of the house that's over nothing. Now the back one you know, it's got some wall there, so it's not taking too much of a span, but this is taking a really big span, considering there's nothing but these little posts that hold about 600 pounds. But let me show you this. So water is somehow getting, I guess it's going through this bed here and traveling, or at least saturating all this under here and it's wicking up underneath the tiles and you can just pull these tiles up and you can see there's dirt underneath the tiles dirt and bugs and all sorts of stuff so we're gonna have to take back these tiles to probably about to that first post there and I don't know if we'll just refinish the concrete here and leave it I would love to turn it back into tile but you know the budget might not allow that but I want to show you over here. So here are the posts. Here's the post. And if we remove this, you can see that's not really supported by anything under there. Uh, I think I can move all these. Uh, I'm not going to. Maybe this one. And the other two are still holding some weight, but you can see how cracked this is. So I just don't know. So first thing we're gonna do, which I might or might not film, is dig all this up, pour a new footing, and put a new post in that can support a lot more weight back in the renovated section show you what we got done here got the jelly jar lights in it's a little bright for the camera but you can see that and we got the fan all finished up it's already installed and everything we just need to put the cover on it let's see here is the sink installed. There was actually nothing to screw this sink down to. Here's part of my daughter's breakfast, I guess. There's nothing to screw the sink down to. So it's just held with white silicon. And then we got this um, faucet. It's hot and cold. Turn on by going like that. We actually didn't know how to work it. We didn't know it went this way. It was actually so stiff you couldn't move it this way when we first got it and we thought it was just um, not working or there was like a plastic piece in it somewhere when we installed it and we kept you know doing this and doing this and then finally we pulled really hard and it went like that and we're like oh okay anyways so if you get one of these kind of faucets you probably already know that but it moves that way and you can see this is the drain that came with this IKEA sink and it's just you know a manual pull it up yourself but this came with a drain that actually matches it and it has like a push button to raise it up and down but it came with a special um, drain attachment that didn't fit under here it wouldn't reach the p-trap and all underneath here so we ended up having to use the IKEA drain. Let's see if you can see the whole thing. Yeah. Let's 
that's what the drain looks like under there. Comes out of the sink, goes across and into the P-trap, and then into the wall. And then we got these, these are just push-on, which, you know, they only cost like a couple of dollars more than the solder-on or the uh, compression fittings. And I was like, well shoot, let's do, just do that. And then they're the quarter turn, so it's a ball valve in there, which I just gotta tell you, if you do a renovation, the quarter turn is just, you know, the, let's see, uh, water's off, no, water's on, water's off. And that's all there is to it. So if there's something's flooding, you don't have to crank and crank and crank and crank to get it off. So I highly recommend the quarter turns. The drawer that was in this, I've got to cut the drawer part itself out and put the um, cover back on it, the uh, drawer face. And I uh, have yet to do that. That's on the list. But um, yeah, so this is where my daughter, I guess, puts on her makeup in the morning. And I think that is is all I'm not sure what we'll do for the walls my in-laws have done galvanized roofing in their bathtub as shower walls and i'm just looking for something cheap but it's not going to be ugly and it's not going to be considered cheap in the future maybe something cottagey you know how some things are really inexpensive that you use for a cottage but um they have an appeal that you know brings more value to the house than, you know, your generic Corian, whatever, something like that. So I don't know what we're going to use it. Something waterproof, obviously. <laughs> anyway, uh, update on this. We're not running it on turbo anymore. It's just set on, um, uh, I think it's called comfort mode. So it keeps the humidity below 50% in here, or you know, around 50% in here. Haven't had any more condensation issues or mold issues. I just wanted to add to about how I film these things. I film all these videos on my phone and I had an iPhone SE that had about 128 gig of storage on it. So I could basically do one or two videos and I edit them all on the phone. Our computer just isn't sufficient. You know, we're on a budget. I can't afford editing stuff, so I know a lot of people might comment recommending this or that or the other, which would be great, but um, all I can afford right now is to do this on my phone, and the phone I got to replace my other phone because it broke is only a 32 gig, so at the most I'm going to be able to get one video on here at a time, so I'm not going to be able to save up videos and put them out in a way that's probably going to be... Um, preferable to subscribers they're kind of gonna come out whenever I can get them done and I can't I don't have a place to store the videos in fact once I post a video I delete it so what's on YouTube is all I've got I've got no archives I don't have any videos saved anywhere I can't pull up any old videos from anywhere it's all basically being stored on YouTube so um, I'm sorry you know to my subscribers if you know the way I release videos and all isn't you know the best and um, if the filming isn't the best because like I said I do it with a phone don't have any camera equipment um, don't have any editing equipment film edit everything on the phone and right now I'm using an iPhone 7 which is new to me but um, like I said it has almost no memory on it so um, yeah, I just wanted to add that and I had a tripod for a little while, but the foam clip broke on it So I need to get another tripod. So That's why I'm holding it while I film it Which I hate too because I just gotten used to doing a couple of things with a tripod, but um, Yeah I apologize in advance for the way they're filmed and the way they're released because until you know save up a little bit more money or you know get to a point where we can spend money on stuff that's not absolutely necessary you know this is the way it's going to be i hope you still learn something from it and i hope uh i hope it helps somebody thanks for watching